Is the cost of drying grain pinching your profits? Did you know that the energy cost for drying can exceed the energy cost for all field work and harvesting of a corn crop combined? In the next few minutes, we will explore some options to reduce grain drying costs. First, you could plant a slightly shorter relative maturity corn so when the corn matures, the weather is warmer and the conditions are better for field drying, thus reducing supplemental drying costs. For example, you could plant a 95-day corn versus a 105-day corn. Yes, there may be a slight reduction in yields, but profits should be your guide, not yields. A second option is to store the grain using a method that doesn't require drying. For feeding cattle, the amount of corn that will be fed during the cold months could be stored in a silage bag as high moisture corn. If the corn temperature is under 40 degrees Fahrenheit, it can be stored for 90 days at a moisture of up to 20% in a grain bin while being fed out. You will need to aerate this high moisture corn continuously to keep it from spoiling. But by spring, when the temperature is over 40, there will be less corn that needs to be dried. We can reduce the cost of grain drying by only drying saleable product, reducing over drying, using heat recovery where possible, using an energy efficient process, purchasing high efficiency dryers, and keeping up with dryer maintenance. All grain should be screened before it enters the dryer to remove fines, bees wings, weed seeds, and other non-markable content to reduce the energy required for drying. If you are using a low temperature or ambient air dryer, Energy can be saved by using a stirring device to reduce overdrying and improving airflow. Stir the grain two or three times as it dries to mix the drier grain at the bottom of the bin with the higher moisture grain at the top. These devices can save about 20% in energy costs. Using a small heater to increase the drying air temperature up to 10 degrees reduces the relative humidity of the air and promotes faster drying. Some growers only use heaters during periods of high humidity, such as nights and rainy days, thus reducing the number of days required for drying and saving energy. If you are operating a high temperature bin dryer, a stirring device will also reduce over drying and save energy. The stirring device would be run continuously when the grain is being dried and can save 20 to 25 percent in drying costs. Turning down the heat is the usual way to save energy, but when it comes to drying grain, the opposite is true. Operating a high temperature dryer at the highest possible temperature for the grain type and intended end use will reduce energy costs. This graph shows the energy used by cross-flow dryers without heat recovery at different airflow rates. The vertical axis is the energy required to remove water from corn grain in BTUs per pound of water removed. The drying temperature is on the horizontal axis. Let's take a look at a dryer that operates at an airflow rate of 75 cubic feet per minute per bushel. Airflow is a design parameter of dryers and can't be changed. Research has shown that as the air temperature is increased, the average energy used to remove moisture from the grain decreases. This is true for grain dryers that operate at other flow rates. This is one case where turning up the heat will turn down your energy costs. The last few points of moisture requires the most amount of energy and time to remove. One option, if possible, is to operate the dryer in full heat mode, drying the corn to within one to one and a half percentage points of the storage moisture target, then transferring the hot grain to the storage bin and removing the remaining moisture with aeration as the grain cools. This is called in-bin cooling. About one-tenth of a percentage point of moisture can be removed for each 10 degrees Fahrenheit reduction in grain temperature. To avoid bottlenecks, size the fan in the cooling bin so the grain is cooled at the same rate as the dryer capacity and keep it running continuously until the corn temperature is cooled to within 10 degrees of the average daily temperature. In-bin cooling can reduce energy costs by 10 to 15 percent and also increases the dryer capacity by 30 percent. A second cooling option is called dryeration. In this case, corn is transferred hot to a cooling bin at two to two and a half percentage points above the storage moisture content and allowed to steep for four to 12 hours before turning on the cooling fans. The steeping period allows the moisture in the kernel to equalize. When the cooling fans are turned on, the moisture in the kernel is more easily removed. With dry aeration, about two tenths of a percentage point can be removed for each 10 degrees Fahrenheit of reduction in grain temperature. 
Once the grain is cooled, it needs to be transferred to another bin as there will be condensation on the bin wall and wet corn next to the wall. Transferring the grain will mix the moisture so it won't cause mold. Steeping, cooling, and transferring the grain can take up to 24 hours, so typically two bins are needed for a dry aeration system if continuous harvesting and drying is desired. Each bin should have the capacity for a day of harvesting. Dry aeration reduces energy use by 15 to 25 percent and increases dryer capacity by up to 70 percent. The options we have discussed can be used to reduce the drying costs for your current dryer, but what if you're purchasing a new dryer? If purchasing a new dryer, you should consider energy costs and not just the investment cost in the buying decision. Often the energy savings of a more efficient dryer can pay for the additional capital costs in a few years. Mixed flow and continuous in-bin dryers are the most energy efficient continuous flow dryers on the market. If purchasing a cross-flow dryer, it should have grain exchangers or inverters and have heat recovery or be used with a dry aeration system. Heat recovery can reduce energy costs by 25%. Dryers with multiple heating zones can allow the drying temperature to be optimized, especially if the corn is wet. This leads to lower drying costs. In summary, when possible, store corn to be used during the winter months for cattle feed at a higher moisture to avoid drying. Grain should be cleaned before drying to remove fines. Operate your high temperature dryer at the highest possible temperature and consider using in-bin cooling or dry aeration to reduce energy use and increase dryer capacity. If using a bin dryer, use a stirring device to reduce over drying. If you are shopping for a new dryer, make energy efficiency part of the buying decision. For more information, refer to Grain Drying, Handling, and Storage Handbook from Midwest Plan Service.